Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all of our righteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. His mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Sing for joy to the living God. Comfort and defend us, gracious. 
precious Lord. Transfiguration of our Lord is from Deuteronomy chapter 34. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho, the city, as far as Zoar. And the Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to your offspring. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley, in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows the place of his burial to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was undimmed and his vigor. And the people of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the people of Israel obeyed him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. And there has not arisen a prophet since 
in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. None like him for all the signs and the wonders that the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and to all his land. And for all the mighty and all the great deeds of terror that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Consider Jesus, the apostle and high priest of our confession, who was faithful to him who appointed him, just as Moses also was faithful in all God's house. For Jesus had been counted worthy of much more glory than Moses, as much more glory as the builder of a house has more honor than itself. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. But Christ is faithful over God's house as a son. And we are his house if indeed we hold fast our confidence and our boasting in our hope. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Holy Gospel. which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah not knowing what he said. And as he, wa uh, as he was saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came, This is my son, my chosen one. Listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God 
is with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gospel text on that mountain of transfiguration 
when he beholds our Lord in all of his glory. It is not all that Peter said in those words that he, he does say there as Luke records it. But it is part of what Luke also says that he didn't know what he was saying. I suppose that could be understood in a few different ways as well. It could be that in Peter's normal impulsive way that you know he just blurted out the first thing that came to his tongue without even thinking about it, without knowing what he was actually saying. But it could also mean that he didn't really mean what he said. Or it could mean that he literally didn't know what he was saying, such that maybe the Holy Spirit put those words there and they just fell off of his tongue and he had nothing to do with it. But I don't think it was any of those things. I think there is a, a very good answer to why he didn't understand what he was saying. It is similar to the high priest that says of Jesus, it is better that one man die than all the people suffer. And thus he becomes a prophet without even knowing what he is saying. Or it could be such as Pontius Pilate says as he presents Jesus to the crowd. He says, behold, the man, not knowing exactly what he is saying, but being the prophet, the oracle of God. Here Peter says, let me make three tents, or tis good Lord to be here. And he doesn't quite grasp the full import of what he is saying. He doesn't quite see the connection that he himself is making <clears throat> to the Old Testament, to the, to the Exodus itself, and to what is actually going on in the conversation with Jesus and Moses and Elijah. So let's take it from the top. St. Luke gives us a time stamp at the beginning of our reading today. It doesn't say, you know, February 27, 2022. It's a relative time stamp that it was after eight days of this particular teaching that this event happens. The scene comes eight days after Jesus was teaching his disciples that they must take up their cross to follow him, that they must not be ashamed of him. And that some that were there present will come, well, they will have the opportunity to see the kingdom of God before they die. After those teachings, eight days after those teachings, Jesus takes this three, Peter, James, and John, and, and they hike up a mountain to go pray together. And there those three see a glimpse of the glory that had long been hidden, a glory that was revealed but not, not fully grasped in all of the miracles that Jesus did, a glory that was glimpsed but not fully seen, or I might say fully heard, in the teachings of Jesus. They behold Jesus in a dazzling scene that few others on this terrestrial ball have ever seen. On this eighth day, a number which symbolizes the new creation, the dawn of the new world, they behold in glory the one in whom all things are being made new. They see and they witness the dawning here of that new creation and what it shall be. It would have been appropriate for Peter to sing that hymn of ours as they were marching up, had he thought about it, had he known about it. Tis good Lord to be here all the way up the mountain. It is to this scene and this kingdom of God that parents too bring their children as they mount the steps of the church and they, they hold that child over our eight-sided font where those newborns receive a birth into the new kingdom, a birth into the kingdom of God. 
that which is revealed even to us through this window of Scripture. It is in these waters, combined with God's Word, where we might, you might say, live out or, or grasp hold of those very teachings that Jesus made before. Because it is in baptism that we deny ourselves, that we recognize our utter helplessness as we follow the way of Jesus. Our full dependence upon God for birth into his kingdom, for life that is eternal. It is in those waters there combined with God's word that we too are born anew. It is in that washing that we abandon the shame of the cross and we adopt it as our own. For it is there that the cross is placed upon our forehead and upon our heart where we begin to wear it as our banner as one who is crucified or who is redeemed in Christ the crucified. It is there that we too see the kingdom of God through the, his merciful action. It is there that in this world we behold the glory of God through the cross of Christ. It is good, Lord, to be here. Those three disciples accompanied Jesus in their climb so that they might join him in prayer. As will be the case in the garden, they're overcome with their physical limitations. They're overcome with, with the needs of their bodies. They become tired and heavy with sleep. Luke doesn't tell us how long they prayed with Jesus or how soon they might have fallen asleep, but we do get the impression that it was not long before they became drowsy and those eyes that were closed with prayer or closed in prayer, were soon shut in slumber. Their inattentiveness to the reality of God's presence and their inability to pray as they are privileged, it did not hinder and it did not diminish the coming, though, of God's kingdom. Only their perception of it was, was what prevented them from declaring what they should have declared. Tis good, Lord, to be here. We see their mistake, and it chastises even us. We realize the very closeness of God, the imminence of his kingdom in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it causes us to pause and wonder how attentive we might be in our prayers. Do we keep our prayers short or, or, or on account of our hurriedness or on account of our own physical limitations? Do we neglect our prayers thinking that God is perhaps too far away or too busy to, to be bothered with the things that trouble us? Or do we see that God and, and, and his heaven is truly now with us? that he is there present to us, attentive to our every petition, even as we confessed in the, in the small catechism today that as our loving Father, he desires to hear from us. He wants to hear from us, for he loves us as his own dear children. So we should pray, not like the disciples, but we should pray with Jesus, we should pray through Jesus, recognizing that wherever we may physically be, God's ear is present there with us, attentive to our needs on account of him. So wherever, whenever we are praying, it is always, tis good Lord to be here. But when they do finally wake up, when they become a fully awake, as Luke says, there they saw the glory of Jesus. They saw the glory of Moses and Elijah with him. They saw there the law, Moses, and the prophets embodied in Elijah, speaking with Jesus about his departure, literally, as Luke writes it, about his exodus that he would accomplish 
at Jerusalem. They heard the testimony of those that were appointed by God to direct men to the faithful sojourn of the Son of Man. A sojourn that he makes in this life. A life full of suffering and struggle. A, 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 a struggle that he must undergo before he attains that goal of arrest in that land of promise that awaits. A contrast made here then with Moses as we read in, in our Old Testament text. Moses, who yes, was the prophet of God who led the people out of Egypt, but could not lead them into the promised land for he himself was disobedient. He was prevented from crossing the river and entering in, and so was buried in Moab instead. But Jesus, our Savior, who leads us out of our bondage through this wilderness land to the land of promise, is the one who is obedient. Not simply for himself, but for us. He leads us across the Jordan into that promised land, into the kingdom of God and life eternal. They were speaking there on that mountain of the passion that Jesus would undergo, of the things that we account or recount in the creeds, that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, that he did rise again, and that he ascended into heaven. We know the words that, that Moses and Elijah spoke, for they're all over the pages from Genesis 1-1 to Malachi 4-6 directing us to the suffering servant who would die for us, but would do so for our salvation. Of course, Peter wanted to erect three tents. Of course, he wanted to build three booths for them to dwell in three tabernacles. <clears throat> for that was the way of the Israelites in the wilderness. They lived in booths. And they celebrated it annually as a feast given them by God. He wanted to preserve the moment. He wanted to enshrine that glory of God so that he might always know where to find God. That he might always be able to go. That he might experience. That he might declare to his good Lord to be here. What Peter didn't grasp was the need for Jesus first to suffer. The necessity for Jesus to suffer for the sins of mankind, for our sin, but then to rise to glory so that he would not have to remain confined in one single little tent. That he would not be confined to one single temple on a mountain. But it was necessary that he finish his sojourn here in our wilderness and ascend, that he might fill all things, so that he might dwell among us on every mountain, in every valley, and more. His exodus that he accomplished at Jerusalem was done that he might pave the way and literally build a road for us that we might follow that we might be with him in his kingdom at the right hand of the Father. The exodus of which they spoke was necessary so that Peter and all others, including us, could one day speak those unbelievable words. Tis good Lord to be here, for here is where Jesus is in all of his glory. Jesus has told us the testimony of Moses and the prophets is sufficient that we need nothing else to point us to the way of salvation in him. Yet, God is always going above and beyond. Above and beyond what we want, above and beyond what we need, even above and beyond what we can ever imagine. Even there, as Peter was speaking,
cloud encompassed them, and the Heavenly Father interrupts him. And there he gives us a clear pronouncement concerning Jesus. This is my son. This is the chosen one. Listen to him. He is the son of the Most High. He is light of light, God of God, very God of very God. He is of that very same essence as the Father and begotten of him. Yet at the same time, he is true man, born of the virgin and, and sharing our very substance, our nature as well. Jesus truly is that chosen one. He is the one elected by God to bear those sins of the world. He is the one chosen to reconcile God to man. Jesus is the one chosen before time even began to make this exodus of which they speak upon the mountain and do so for us, to do so with us, that he might present us once again before the Father as those prized and beloved children that he calls us. Jesus is the one to whom we must listen to if we hope to be saved. He is the one whom we must heed should we too desire, desire to see God's glory. He is the one whom we must believe for he is the one who speaks truth, the one who speaks life. Jesus is the one we need to follow into suffering and into death, into servanthood and sacrifice, so that our path will also accompany him to resurrection and to life, to those glories that are unfathomable by us, into that kingdom of God. And I close with the doxology from our hymn that we will sing. O Father, with the eternal Son and Holy Spirit ever one, we pray thee bring us by thy grace to see thy glory face to face. Amen. For our prayers today, we have, I thought we had three birthdays. We were praying for three birthdays up until this morning because I found out one's not actually on Thursday. But we do have two birthdays that I know of on Thursday. Um, Marie, the younger, and uh, Paul in the back um, have birthdays on Thursday this week. Um, we uh, also add to, to our petitions for healing, uh, Rebecca, who underwent gallbladder surgery on Thursday, who is home now and recovering. Um, but we do uh, seek God's blessing that her recovery would be full and speedy. Um, along with that, um, uh, I'll add a petition in here or a por portion to a petition for all areas under war uh, that God would, would bring about peace in our time. So I invite you to stand or kneel with me for pray prayer as we pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all others according to their needs. Heavenly Father, in prayer, your Son, Jesus, revealed his glory to Peter, James, and John. Grant that we, also gathered in prayer, would see him by faith and receive from him the redemption that he has accomplished for us. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, your Son shines in resurrected light. So illuminate your church with his own brightness that she would tell the world Display to the world his mighty deliverance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, as you appointed Moses of old to lead your people, so you sent your son Jesus to found 
and to lead your church. <coughs> Sustain us from age to age and grant us teachers of righteousness to guide us in the days to come. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your Son cares carefully and faithfully for his holy church, grant us a sure confidence in him and give us faithful hearts to serve him according to the callings that he has given us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you alone establish all authority on earth. Bless those entrusted with this responsibility, both here and abroad, that they would serve with integrity and honor and for the well-being of all. Grant that all warfare and division, all conflict and strife in our country and abroad would give way to unity and peace and quietness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father of all comfort, as we follow the way of your apostles into your presence, you join our prayers to the ceaseless petitions of your dear Son. Hear us for the sake of the troubled, the sick, and the dying, especially for Bill, Barb, Ray, Rebecca, and Kevin. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious Father, you gave your Son as the final sacrifice for sin. As he faithfully prepares his own body and blood for us Christians to eat and to drink, grant us confidence to draw near to him and to receive him worthily. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your Son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end that we may die a blessed death, believing in your beloved Son, with whom you are well pleased. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. Um, for announcements, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. We will have, I will do the, the morning prayer at 7 on Facebook, but we will have live services here at noon and at 7 p.m. The noon service will be a masked service. And the 7 p.m. it is at your discretion. Um, and so thus begins Lent. I did not get a request for noontime services throughout Lent. So following that, um, on the Wednesdays, we will have a Vespers at 7 p.m. And um, if anybody wishes to have a soup supper, um, we can coordinate that as we go. Um, so as we work our way through Lent, we will be... Um, uh, uh, working on the Lord's Prayer, that is, I'll be preaching on the Lord's Prayer throughout Lent. Paul. Oh, actually, once. Well, go ahead. It's yours. Who else first? That's okay, Paul. That's fine. I saw you first. Okay. Uh, the, just because most of the uh, we we have a large council, okay, and most of the a lot of the members are on the council, so I thought I'd use this moment just to remind you that we are now starting council meetings starting this Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Look in your email for a Facebook link, or not Facebook, uh, 
Zoom. Zoom link. We will be meeting on Zoom, and uh, if you don't see it, please reach out to me and get that so that we can uh, start collecting. Uh, hopefully, we don't have all the panics that we've been through these last two years, and, but we do have things to tend to as spring is coming and as the year comes before us. So the, first, the point of this is to collect all our to-dos and figure out what we need to do this coming year and, and assess that. So I uh, look forward to seeing you on Zoom on, uh, on Tuesday. Thank you. Betsy. Um, I invite all the ladies uh, to attend the LWM Lutheran Women's Missionary League Convention in uh, the 29th and 30th of April in Taunton, Mass. Uh, I have information downstairs. We're also doing a 80th anniversary collection of coins, dollars, or whatever. And they're basing it on eight, so it could be 80 pennies, nickels, dimes, whatever. Uh, we'll bring my boxes and bring them in, and I'll be collecting them on the 21st of uh, March, so I can get them in before the end of the biennium. So just to clarify, the 80th anniversary is the LWML anniversary. Of the New England District. Of the New England District. Of the New England District. Okay. And also, please join us downstairs after service uh, for... Fat Tuesday, however you want to spell it, it's A-G-P-H-A-T, uh, but it's on a Sunday, uh, and it's Lent on Wednesday, and, you know, we just kind of cleaned up things, and we've got a lot of goodies downstairs, so please join us. Thank you. Okay. Derek. Thank you. Uh, next Sunday, uh, it's the one-year anniversary of Sandy and I joining your family here, and it's celebration that. Sing before you get your coffee. You yeah. sing for your coffee. Yeah. Okay. Others. Okay. God's blessings to those that joined us on Facebook, and we look forward to seeing you in person or uh, next week on the same manner. We collect our offerings. <laughs>